Welcome everybody to uh, Tri-Cities Community Television. Uh, we're out here in Port, well, sunny Port Coquitlam, out in the uh, uh, Veterans Park with our special guest today, which is uh, Mayor Brad West. Mr. West, thank you very much and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean, it's so nice to sit outside, uh, as it's, at least for a few more days anyway. And I, I appreciate uh, the, the crew's effort to get us out here and, and for yours uh, for being here. So thank you very much. Absolutely. I know uh, for yourself as a first term mayor, you, know, you have a very strong presence on social media. So for a lot of folks who are on social media, we kind of know a bit more about you than maybe folks who don't. So I just wonder if you just give us a sense of uh, who you are. And I know you've had some family uh, additions this year. So a lot of big stuff is happening for you and your family. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, well, first off, I'm a lifelong resident of this city. I was born and raised in Port Coquitlam. Uh, my family moved to the city in the early 80s. My parents from North Burnaby. And like a lot of families at that time and still today, they came to Port Coquitlam to find a more affordable place to live. Uh, that was a, a good community to raise a family. And so I was raised in Port Coquitlam, went to Hazel Trembath Elementary School, and then I was the uh, first uh, group of students that went to Sidhill Middle School the entire way through. So six, seven, and eight, and then over to Riverside for grade nine, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, and uh, I am married. My wife Blair and I are raising our two sons in the city. Uh, we have Liam, who's five, and actually just started yesterday kindergarten at Hazel Trimbath Elementary School. So it was pretty cool, cool actually yeah. uh, for me to have that experience to go back to the elementary school I went to and have my son attending there. And we've had some uh, uh, pretty cool conversations about that. He, when I told him that I went there, he said, but dad, you're so old. How did you, you, how did you go to my school? Uh, and, um, and yes, we, uh, we, we had a, a pandemic baby as well, uh, which was, uh, a unique experience that uh, I know a lot of couples who've had babies over the last uh, two years of we've we've connected with and kind of commiserate about what that was like. Uh, our son Owen was born uh, last year and and he's uh, 15 months now. Yeah, I, I know I have a few friends who are you know younger than me and I think it's I, I kind of missed how stressful it would be having a baby. You know, it's stressful having a baby, but also yeah. doing in COVID. You're really especially when there's no vaccine. I mean, there's a lot of so I, I found myself kind of disconnected from that kind of stress that a, that a new family would, would have. And I'm glad it all worked out for you, it did. you and your wife. Yeah. So COVID itself, it's still here. Um, you know, the, the city went through a whole bunch of, uh, I mean, it's your first term mayor and you wouldn't, you, know, you it's very great to be a mayor, I'm sure, but I don't think any, any new mayor would ever think, oh, give me a pandemic. I could throw that in the Absolutely. equation. Yeah. So how did that, how did COVID affect uh, your leadership with the city and how did it affect the city and just kind of updates for the folks out there? Yeah, uh, well, you nailed it. When I uh, ran for mayor, uh, leading our city through a global pandemic was not on my to-do list. Uh, but a lot of, like a lot of things in this job, you have to deal with things that uh, come at you that you didn't choose to, uh, to initiate. And so, you know, I'm incredibly proud of the city's leadership uh, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, right from the early days, um, you know, when there was a lot of confusion a lot of um, uncertainty, a lot of fear. Uh, you know, the city acted really decisively and took the steps we needed to to, to keep people safe. Uh, we were always on the leading edge of rolling out different initiatives. Uh, you know, it was a horrible thing for our local businesses to get through, um, you know, to all of a sudden be uh, shut down or to be severely restricted in, in how they operate. and. You know, in Port Coquitlam, as in many communities, local businesses are really the lifeblood of the city and they contribute so much to uh, not only in commerce and employment, uh, but so much to, you know, local community groups and sports groups. And, you know, whenever we need them to step up, uh, they're there for us. And so it was a, an opportunity for the city and the community to have their back. And so we rolled out a whole number of initiatives, whether it was a uh, uh, public, uh, pardon me, uh, business use of uh, outdoor spaces, uh, where not only did the city uh, allow for that to happen in a very straightforward, uh, easy, simple, uh, affordable way, we also went an extra step and allocated uh, some funds to have city crews actually help 
uh, local businesses um, do some of the work that they need to have the outdoor patios and outdoor display spaces and you know that that's something that has uh, really been uh, very popular within the community and I hear all the time from people who who love you know these outdoor patios that we have uh, and you know there again the city showed leadership when we were the first community in Metro Vancouver to say we're going to make them permanent uh, you know this is something that people have been wanting for so long and you know it's kind of odd it took a pandemic to get us there but you know once we got there uh, and ad adapted to some of these new things you know we didn't want to lose them so you know I think whether it, was ideas like that, uh, whether it was what we did to try and ease the financial burden. You know, I remember, you know, the number of people who were um, out of work, um, who all of a sudden, you know, weren't getting a paycheck, uh, but still had to pay a rent or pay a mortgage. You know, so the steps we took to reduce uh, property tax increases during those years to zero. Uh, again, the only city in Metro Vancouver that did that, uh, extending the deadline for people to to pay property taxes and utility fees you know these were all little common sense things the city could do to make life just a little bit easier people during a uh, for people during a very challenging time uh, and so i'm incredibly proud of of all the work that we did and the other thing i would highlight too is uh, the efforts the city put into maintaining a sense of uh, connection and social cohesion and uh, community connection during this time. You know, um, uh, some places canceled altogether their events. Uh, you know, May Day is, is such an iconic uh, tradition in Port Coquitlam and rather than say, okay, we're not doing it, um, we found ways to take May Day to the community and we had, you know, this wonderful uh, you know, modified May Day Parade that went all the way around Port Coquitlam and you know that is a memory that will stick with me uh, for my entire life because uh, you know it, it was really at that time that we were uh, we were really being told that we had to maintain you know our, our tight bubble um, and to be able to uh, lead a, a, a city parade through the community and see people uh, by the thousands out on their front lawn waving and giving thumbs up and and uh, you know just the the kids smiling because they're you know seeing the big dump trucks and all the rest of it roll through um, you know things like that I think really make pork you know that that's why pork Coquitlam is the place that it is uh, that sense of community and, and so um, the efforts that our staff made to find ways to keep that going during the COVID-19 pandemic I think also just uh, exemplary. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. I was lucky enough to go on the actual, I mean, I think all the city cruise as well. It was kind of, a, like you said, it was impromptu, but it was just the city cruise and the fire trucks going around. And uh, I was lucky enough to be on, in one of the vehicles. And it's the first time for me. And I, I really was surprised to see how many people came out. Yeah. I think sometimes, you know, the people are happy to see you, but yeah. you get a joy being in the parade yourself. You know, oh, you're like, wow, well, yeah. this is a great city to be in. It's yeah. almost like Everybody should have a chance to drive around the city once in a break. <laughs> yeah, no, for so, sure. Um, and I, the other thing that kind of, um, a couple of things I wanted to highlight. One is that we've got the drinking in, in the parks, and that was a big part of Huge. Uh, yeah. getting families out into parks. We've we got some new water parks, and I, I really see, even at Citadel there, that, like this, this kind of, I call, uh, kind of almost like tent and dinner. You know, people are actually yeah. out doing, I've never seen it before. I call it a COVID after effect, but it <laughs> seems to be like the parks are full it, uh, and busy. It is one of the you know, awesome things that we have seen um, continue as uh, restrictions have, have gone away is uh, our, park out, our park use, our trail use um, grew exponentially. I think a lot of people in, in our community discovered um, the parks and green spaces and trails that we have in Port Coquitlam, maybe for the first time. Yeah. Um, you know, because I certainly know that with my family. Now I've, I've been to every park and every trail growing up here but you know for a lot of people you know who i would chat with maybe they've lived in poco for you know five years or, or ten years and they kind of they have their go-to parks and you know they would uh run into me and we chat about you know how much time people are spending outdoors and you know i would say to them oh have you checked out the blakeburn lagoons and they're like oh no what's that and i would tell them and where they could go and and, and find it and then uh, i would get a message after saying you know, oh my goodness, like what a, a, a beautiful little oasis uh, that exists over there. And so, you know, a lot of people I think were 
discovering or rediscovering their city. Yeah. And it was a wonderful thing. And, and that's continued. You, you see so many people in our parks and on our trails now. And you know, one of the things I've, I've tried to prioritize as mayor with council is that we're really investing in those spaces. And so, as you mentioned, uh, you've seen the addition of uh, spray parks, uh, which have been incredibly popular. You've seen us uh, making sure we're making investments in our outdoor pools, so they're here to serve the next generation of our community. Uh, new playgrounds, we've done uh, more playground replacements in the last four years uh, than the city has done in the last several decades. And so you've got a number of you know, beautiful new uh, playgrounds that are uh, a hub of activity for, for families. And then as you mentioned, you know, uh, being really progressive in our thinking and uh, and kind of throwing off some of the, the shackles that uh, seem to uh, in, inhibit uh, government decision making on things like allowing people to responsibly uh, consume an adult beverage in our parks. Yep. Um, which in North America, you know, people are like, oh my goodness, but you know, in, in Europe and in other places in the world, this is you know, incredibly common. And, you know, we have done that. We did that as the first city in Metro Vancouver. There's a number that have followed us since. We've had this in place for three years now. Uh, and, you know, the community has shown uh, that they can, uh, uh, you know, be trusted uh, to, to have that ability and, and to not have any, you know, major issues. Uh, you know, there's been some of the kind of uh, doomsday scenarios at the beginning of oh no if you do that you know it's going to be anarchy <laughs> um, and none of that has come to pass what it has been it's been families yeah um, it's been like you said people getting together for a picnic or a barbecue uh, you know it, it's meant that there's been weddings in our uh, parks I was at uh, a Gates Park uh, one day and and there was a wedding happening yeah. and uh, uh, someone in the wedding party spotted me and 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 they called me over and I, I was able to go and give a, a toast to the the bride and groom and um, you know it was a it was a beautiful thing because uh, they were able to to get married to have their wedding uh, to do it outdoors uh, you know to have friends and family and you know and to be able to have a couple of adult beverages so um, you know, that's something where I think the sh city really showed leadership. We showed um, that we can be progressive. We showed that, uh, you know, we don't need to study things for years to make a decision. Uh, we can, you know, we can respond. Um, and, you know, when you treat adults like adults, the vast, vast majority of people rise to the occasion. And, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how that has worked out. and. And, you know, the one other thing I'll mention about it, too, is you look around Port Coquitlam and, you know, they're not building any more single family homes. Uh, what's being built uh, is largely row, uh, row homes, townhomes and apartments. Uh, and what that means is, you know, a lot of people in our community um, don't have, you know, what many people would consider to be the typical or traditional backyard. Yeah. Right. And so in many ways, our parks have become people's backyards. And, you know, so again, you go to Gates, you go to Lions Park, you go uh, Evergreen, you go a whole bunch of different parks and you see uh, people, um, you know, having picnics, having barbecues, you have uh, people, you know, playing games, you know, cornhole, bocce, you know, uh, take your pick. And so- um, Beer pong. A little <laughs> beer pong too. And uh, nothing wrong with that. And so for, for people in our community, uh, who don't live in the single family home, again, allowing the responsible consumption of alcohol um, has, I think, uh, opened up our parks uh, 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 to them in a way that they weren't before. So uh, I'm really pleased with yeah, how that's I, I, working. Yeah, you know, I'm a citizen of Port Quill myself, and I, 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 I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the trust to actually do that. I think, you know, so I, I think it was a, it was a project that was well received. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I, art's really close to my heart, and I know that uh, maybe because you have a young family, but the, you kind of also, we had the boards up with sort of, uh, we're all together. Yep. I think people were painting rocks. So I think that was some of the things you're probably talking about, reaching out to people who are probably walking on their own or with somebody else along the street. And uh, I think I think some there were some kids who it, sort of the city got the boards out. And That's right. That was really cool. Um, 
The, the, the big one I think is, um, I know last election, and before I ask that question, obviously it's your first term as mayor and o October is the, the, your second chance to be mayor for a second term. So I, yep. I'm assuming that we're, you're running again for, for mayor of Port Coquitlam. Yes, I am. Yeah. I was just getting worried because I thought you were running for the premier of the province. I know your name <laughs> came up there a couple of times. So. No, that's, uh, that, that's flattering um, to, to have your name mentioned. And I guess it means uh, at some level people think you're doing a good job. Um, but uh, no, um, my priorities and um, my interests are here in Port Coquitlam and so yep, I'm, yep. I'm running for a second term and we've got a lot more to do and I'm looking forward to getting it done. Yeah. But I also think maybe that's because as a, even though you're a municipal mayor, you know, you've kind of brought Tim Hortons to some meetings to sort of protest, you know, sort of include uh, how, how our politics has been affected maybe federally or provincially. So like you are a, uh, a person who speaks out for non-municipal uh, topics and, and just a sense of how that that kind of why you think that's important and, and sure. sort of help people understand you know some people might say why is he doing it he's the mayor of poco you know yeah. and, and uh, give us a sense of that yeah great. absolutely well my approach to this is you have to deal with first things first and so my number one priority is uh my responsibilities as mayor and that's to to lead the city uh, to act as the chief executive officer of the city and to make sure that the city is living up to its responsibilities to its citizens. And that's job number one. And so you'll hear me talk a lot about that, that the city has to get the basics right. Uh, there are things that the city is responsible for and nobody else is. It is the city's responsibility to deliver and do certain things. And that is what people send their tax dollars to City Hall for. And so before we go off and do anything else, we have to make sure we're getting that part right. Uh, and it, it is that kind of first things first approach. Uh, and so that is absolutely my, my number one priority and, and where I spend the, the vast majority of, of my time. Now, I think that I'm a pretty high energy individual, uh, an individual who can do a number of things at once, can walk and chew gum at the same time. And so what I've also done is where I see there are issues that are not directly the responsibility of the municipality, but impact the residents of Port Coquitlam. Uh, and I believe I have something to add to that public discourse, then I'm not shy about stating my opinion uh, and bringing some attention. That doesn't cost the residents of Port Coquitlam anything. There's no you know, city staff that are utilized in that. Uh, that's me using my abilities and my voice to uh, bring an issue to light. Uh, and there's been a number of examples over uh, the last four years where I've done that. Uh, certainly, I think that I've been one of the strongest voices in the province with respect to money laundering. Uh, and the reason I've been a strong voice on that is because I've seen how that impacts regular people. When you allow a situation to take place where billions of dollars of money uh, that has been basically earned off of the deaths of thousands of our citizens through uh, you know, drug poisoning, uh, through opioid poisoning, uh, through fentanyl, uh, the, the large scale dealing of uh, an importation of fentanyl. Um, and that money then is turned around and washed uh, clean in our uh, casinos, in our uh, real estate market and in other areas, um, that is a profound effect on people in this province. Uh, and I wasn't hearing a lot of other politicians talk about that. You know, we would hear these horror stories in the news about duffel bags of cash and no one raising an eyebrow. People thinking it's normal to walk into a casino with a million dollars in rolled up 20s in a hockey bag. Yeah. And at that time, well, they picked the hockey bags. So it was Canadian. That's Some right. They could, at, you know, at, at you that know. time, no one was doing anything about it. Yeah. And, and I thought that was wrong. I know, you know, it's the type of thing that, you know, your average citizen would never be able to get away with. And, and so I felt that someone needed to give voice to that issue. And so I did that. Uh, and I think was quite successful in bringing a lot of attention to the issue and eventually getting uh, the provincial and federal government to, to, to take action. Now, there's a lot more things they need to do, um, but at least it's on the radar now and there are things being done, whereas before everyone had their head in the sand about it. So 
um, so that's been my approach. Um, you know, it, it to me, it's again, um, first things first, priority is what the city is responsible for. But if there are issues that are impacting the people of Port Coquitlam, and I'm not seeing anyone else talk about it, I'm not shy about you know, sticking my head up and saying, yeah. hey, you know what, this is wrong and someone needs to be paying attention to it. Well, I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think people always find that challenge. You know, if you're a mayor, stay in your lane. If you're, if you're a federal or provincial person, stay in your lane. But realistically, most people, I think, uh, and I, I would say I was like that, is, to, you know, politics at all levels is, is it's, you, you hope they all work together and understand each other. For I, sure. I, I know, and I the, and these issues are overlapping as well. Yeah. yeah. So that, that hit, one of the things you didn't touch there is that, you know, with this sort of, the, you know, buckets of cash coming into casinos is this surge in housing pricing. And that mm -hmm. and sort of that, that, that direct correlation between, you know, houses being an asset which is used by, by this wash money. So, and we're seeing that in Port Quitlam, you know, the average uh, family income is 75,000. That's assuming, you know, income from everybody working. And, and houses now are five, 600,000 for an apartment or more, right? Yeah. I think my sister, you know, was lucky enough to, you know, she did really well with her townhouse in Maple Ridge. So, yeah. and in crazy prices, right? Yeah. Which is great if you sell, but you have to live here. For sure. Uh, you, you know, so so how do how does the city help that? How does yeah. the city address that with young families or coming into Port Quitlam or staying here? Yeah, it, it's uh, an incredibly challenging issue and 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 frustrating as well because I see in our city we are using every tool at our disposal to try and pr get housing produced that is uh, within reach of the average person and the average income. And, and you know what, we've had more success at that in the last four years than this city has had in probably nearly the last four decades. Currently, there are 500 units of uh, truly affordable, below market, including end of market, bottom of market, uh, subsidized housing units in various stages of construction. Now, 500 for a city the size of Port Coquitlam mm. is nothing to sneeze at. And the city has been able to achieve that through a lot of hard work, a lot of partnerships, uh, being really creative about how the city can provide uh, incentives and relaxations on certain things to make these projects go. Um, so that's the first thing is, um, you know, we have a lot to be proud of in terms of the infusion of below market units in Port Coquitlam, about 500. And again, you would have to go back to probably the 80s uh, to find something comparable in Port Coquitlam's history. Um, and, and yet, and, so, and yet, yeah. To interject, and, though, just yeah. to provide a context, right? 500 is a great. Sure. But when you look at the the percent po population of Port Quitlam, 68,000 people. Yeah. I think I'm just I'm rough numbers. You know, number of households divided by four. You probably got maybe 18,000 houses or, yeah. or to that pace, so right? You, so you gotta let me finish because yeah. what I was gonna say. And yet, the 500 units is is not enough. Yeah. Um, and this is the the difficult part. Um, there has been a complete uh, detachment of housing price from local incomes. But this is not unique to Port Coquitlam. Um, you know, this is, this is a phenomenon that's happening not just in Port Coquitlam, not just in Metro Vancouver, not just in British Columbia. This is across the entire country in Canada. And so it will require the uh, federal and provincial government uh, to step up to the plate to um, to first get back in the, into the business of building housing, which is something that uh, they got out of, and instead shifted towards providing, uh, um, you know, uh, funding to to others to deliver it, uh, and relying heavily on the the private uh, sector um, uh, to to deliver uh, public housing. Um, so I, I think that needs to dramatically change. Um, and also, um, you know, whether it be on the, uh, uh, you know, the unregulated uh, capital that has come from overseas, uh, whether it's um, uh, money laundering, the speculation, you know, they need to uh, square in on some of that as well, uh, because that's also having an impact. And then the other piece, because I really believe in all of the above approach, quite often this debate gets... Um, 
siloed into, okay, it's all about um, implementing a number of demand measures, so implementing a number of taxation measures to try and quell demand, or it's all about increasing supply, um, you know, to bring down the cost. The reality is we, we need to do bits of, of both of those. Um, municipalities do need to work with other levels of government to ensure that uh, we are providing enough supply of housing within the community. And in Port Coquitlam, uh, we, have do we have done that through our Housing Choices Program, uh, through revisions to our official community plan, through our affordable and family-friendly housing policy. Uh, and you see throughout the city, you know, there is densification that's occurring. Uh, it tends not to be the type of densification that you see in other cities. Um, where you get you know very large high rises in Port Coquitlam, you'd get more uh, you know gentle medium uh, type density. Uh, you know in downtown Port Coquitlam, obviously there's a number of apartment buildings that have been built. Uh, you see, as I said, a, a bunch of ground orientated row homes and townhomes being built uh, in place of former single family homes, uh, and so we're doing our part to ensure that um, you know. Uh, supply is being uh, provided because people have to have places to live you know and the other piece of this that is often overlooked is um, the federal government uh, has uh, raised immigration levels to record amounts um, and when they make those decisions it does have a, a trickle down effect that they ought, they don't consult with either municipalities or really even the provincial government on this. And I know provinces have actually said the federal government needs to talk to us more about um, you know, the, the immigration uh, levels that they're setting. Because of course, you know, if you are having um, you know, 600,000 people annually um, come to the country, and primarily those people are settling in uh, Metro Vancouver, Metro Toronto, or Metro Montreal, uh, you need to have places for them to live. Uh, and so uh, housing is um, you know, one of the real challenging issues that I think uh, is probably one of the highest priorities for, uh, for people on the street, uh, that and, and you know, just the cost of living. Um, you know, those are the two things that I think are on most people's mind these days. And, uh, and I think uh, in the city, I'm confident that we are using every you know, tool at our disposal uh, to try and bring about improvement. Um, and that's why I started this answer by saying it's frustrating because I see how much the city is doing. I see the different initiatives. I see the incentives we're offering. Uh, you know, I see all the real creative, out of the box type of things that we're doing. Uh, I, I see, you know, how strongly we're advocating to other levels of government. Um, and and although we have a lot of success, um, you know, it's still not enough. So one of the big things for us, obviously, for Port Quitlam is the new PCCC, or rather they call it in the city, or the Port Quitlam Community Center. Yep. Um, big, you know, largest capital costs for our city. Uh, uh, just quickly, I, I know it's on time and on budget, but, oh, but my line. <laughs> I had to do that. But uh, just kind of the impact that's going to have in the city and, and what makes you so excited about that. Yeah, yeah, what a phenomenal facility. I was in there the other day uh, with Liam. Uh, he had his la last uh, lacrosse game of the season. And, you know, I just took a moment to take it all in because you had... Um, two arenas with uh, local kids playing lacrosse. You had ice in on the third arena uh, with people doing a public skate. Uh, the uh, Wilson Lounge had uh, seniors doing a, a cooking and, and, and a lunch and tea. You had the fitness center filled. You had the pool jammed. You had the basketball court full inside. You had outside people on the playground, people playing pickleball, and it's just like, Wow, you know, what a facility. Um, you know, I'm incredibly proud of what the city has delivered there. I think it not only is going to serve you know, our, our community right now, uh, but it's going to serve our community so well into the future. Um, you know, people who come from other places uh, to, you know, either they're on another team or they're visiting here, 
uh, are just wowed by that facility and everything it offers this community under one roof. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I think it, it needs to be stated, it was delivered on time, on budget, during a global pandemic with all the challenges that that presented uh, and is the largest capital project in this city's history. And so, you know, it was uh, incredibly responsibly managed uh, and delivered. And uh, I don't know that we, we even know at this point all the positive impacts that it's going to have. I think it, uh, you know, when you talk about what the work we're doing in downtown Port Coquitlam to bring vibrancy and energy to this, uh, it all started with the Port Coquitlam Community Centre and uh, it's going to just continue to grow. You know, uh, we're going to continue to do new and exciting things there. Uh, this weekend, we've got two Western Hockey League games that are happening there. Yeah, uh, the Giants are coming to town. Right, the, the Giants are coming to play. And, you know, so we're going to bring, you know, world-class events right into Port Coquitlam uh, for our residents to enjoy. Uh, on top of all the amenities that that uh, facility offers uh, people who call Port Coquitlam home. So I think it's something that everyone in our city can be proud of. It's exceptionally well used. Um, it, you know, it's just it's incredibly popular. Uh, people always talk to me about the underground parkade. They love that. Um, we built an underground parkade that has uh, a lot of spaces for people, uh, and we don't charge for parking. Um, you yeah. can't Coquitlam. I mean, when the SkyTrain came in, they started you know, <laughs> you had parking meters going out. That's so. right. I mean, I just can't say enough about it. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just going to continue to add and enhance and, yeah. you know, just it, it's a, a process of continual improvement for our city. So I, I agree. I've been there. It's amazing. The, the one thing, though, I know when it came to financing that we had, we were, had good cash reserves of 40 plus million. We could do that. Got a couple couple of 12 million from from, I guess, a federal grant. But we did sell or, or offload four acres of that land which is now has five buildings in there. Yeah. Combination of market value. It's like back to that word, market value, rental, and uh, and senior. But mm -hmm. is there a affordable word that, that probably is is going to be missing in that in that equation? You think, like when you see those things go up? Uh, so, the I mean, there's a couple of things on that. Um, first, the this dates back now you're going seven years ago yeah, so before your time uh, before my time as mayor but I, I mean i can speak to it uh, because it was on council and you know the the city um had the old city works yard site yeah. uh, behind the old rec center uh and wanted to get the highest and best use uh out of that property uh to take that money to contribute to the building of the community center and so uh, that meant in, in that development, uh, it is uh, market rent, um, mm. or pardon me, market rent or, um, uh, or uh, market strata. Um, uh, there are units that are rented and there are units that are owned, uh, but it is at market value. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to uh, providing uh, affordable housing, you know, I, I talked about that previously, uh, you know, the city is finding those opportunities, you know, on the right sites. It's, it, you know, in that instance, uh, the, the objective there was um, uh, from the council of the day to get the most money possible to contribute to the community center, which lessens the amount that taxpayers have to contribute to it. Uh, and when you're coming at it from that perspective, you know, it is going to be a, a market housing site. And so that's what it is. Yep. Um, you know, the other thing that I think is worth mentioning about it, though, is it has uh, commercial retail at the bottom. And, you know, you're starting to see some very cool uh, businesses open up uh, along there and really adding to the vibrancy of the uh, Terry Fox hometown square and the Port Coquitlam Community Center. Um, I've had the opportunity to be in most of those businesses now. Yep. Um, and, you know, the people who own them uh, and are running those businesses are exciting. Um, you know, there's some great uh, coffee shops, pizza and uh, restaurant and, you know, um, yep. and professional services. So, um, you know, all in all, I think uh, it's a really good mix. 
that has been uh, produced there. And the seniors rental building is under uh, development right yeah, now. Yeah, it's just, it's just being developed there. And it's all hindsight, hindsight. I mean, who knows, that the, whoever thought the market would be as crazy as it is. So uh, KFN, so I know the last couple of months that we've, we've sort of come, the city has come to some agreement with uh, Quay Quitlam First Nations on access for services and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And just the importance of that uh, in sure. that agreement. Yeah, I mean, it is a historic agreement between the city of Port Coquitlam and the Quay Quitlam First Nation. And uh, something that um, was, uh, um, was flummoxing both parties for, um, for a long time. And you know, I'm really pleased with the relationship I've developed with uh, Chief, Chief Ed Hall uh, at the Coquitlam First Nation. And um, I, I've met with uh, Chief Hall more than any other person yeah. uh, in, the, in the city or, or beyond the city. Uh, and you know, we made a commitment to each other that uh, we were going to, to get this done. And so both parties prioritized it, um, got the, the right people in the room. Uh, and we we're able to, to work through, you know, the various issues, most of which are um, technical and engineering um, in nature, yeah. uh, to be able to reach a, a servicing agreement, which we'll see the city of Port Coquitlam provide services uh, to the Coquitlam First Nation, which will allow them to proceed with uh, the, uh, their vision for uh, development, um, you know, which is going to contribute significantly to the prosperity of that nation and, and its members. And so, um, you know, um, obviously, reconciliation is something that uh, is first and foremost on the minds of, of many folks, and uh, you know it's one of the po most important acts of uh, reconciliation that uh, the city can be undertaking is to uh, ensure the you know the economic uh, uh, sustainability and prosperity of that nation by allowing them to develop their own lands and and bring yeah. services to them. So. Um, I think it was uh, one of the most significant achievements over the last four years. Yeah, and, and, and just to help people understand, I mean, obviously the nation can do its own thing. I yep. guess it just needs to have, obviously the city has the engine of services, yeah, right? Is, you know, this is uh, water, yeah. sewer, uh, utilities, uh, all the things that are required uh, of any development yeah. uh, in the city. And so it will see us uh, provide those services as well as some additional services. Um, uh, and, you know, again, I think it really signals uh, a, a partnership and a strong future uh, uh, between both of our communities. Well, first of all, I want to thank you very much for coming in. And we're out here in, the, obviously, in the, a place that's changing itself because the new, there's a lot, lots of things to talk about. The new, new you know, the Arts Village, the Lee yes. Square, we're down in the Donald's Pathway. I mean, uh, the, the improvement of downtown here. but. But of course, next year you hit on that hundred years of, of May Day. Um, yep. Just I know it's a big, a big one, big party. So uh, anything you want to sort of pass on just before we say goodbye? Yeah, you know I'll just say it has been an an incredible honor to serve as the city's mayor for the last four years. Um, I've now served on city council for 14 years, um, 10 as a councillor and now four as mayor. And uh, you know it, it, it's hard to describe how special it is. Um, you know, Port Coquitlam is, uh, is so much a, a part of me and my family. Uh, you know, having been born and raised here, having now raising my family here, um, you know, I just truly love the city. Uh, I don't think there's any place like it. Uh, and there's no place I would ever want to live. And so to be fortunate enough to have the residents of this community place their trust in me, to lead our city uh, and to be able to work with a fantastic team of council and staff uh, to contribute to what Port Coquitlam's future looks like is, um, is really an indescribable honor. It, I, it's a very serious responsibility. I take it very seriously. Uh, and I work as hard as I can every single day uh, trying to go the extra mile um, to do the best job I can for the people of Port Coquitlam. And I'm hoping that on October 15th, they will see fit to uh, allow me to work for them for another four years and would be my, my honor to do so. I think we've accomplished uh, a significant amount uh, over the last term and I think we've got a lot more to do. We've got a lot of momentum uh, and we're on, a, a, I think, a fantastic trajectory uh, with the city adding vibrancy, energy, new amenities, um, you know, new 
uh, excitement, um, you know, and particularly what we're going to do with our downtown, you know, retain what makes downtown Port Coquitlam a really special and unique place, uh, but just add to add to that, um, you know, with more options for people and really make this a, a go-to destination that uh, people want to come and spend a day and can, you know, do shopping and have places to be entertained and to eat and to have a drink and, uh, you know, just be a, an absolute hub of activity. And, and I'm really excited about that. And, uh, and I think our community is excited about it too. I hear so many positive comments. So um, it, it has been an honor and I'm, uh, I'm hoping people will uh, give their trust to me again. Well, well, first of all, uh, thank you for coming out and, and, and taking the time uh, in your schedule to kind of chat with uh, as a community television. I do appreciate that. So thank you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. So that's uh, Brad West again, uh, the mayor of Port Quitlam with an update. Uh, mayor West uh, with his family can be seen on most, if not all, uh, celebrations in the city, especially Canada Day and all those kind of things. So he's. Uh, if you have a chance to see him, just walk up and say hi. He's not one that's going to run from you. Uh, thank you again for watching. Again, this is Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. Thanks a lot. That was good. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it.